Let's suppose you're in an exam and you need to calculate 1 over 2 root 3. So you're used to putting this into your trusty calculator as 1 divided by 2 root 3 like that. Hit equals and you would get the correct answer of 0 0.29. But let's suppose on this particular day your calculator has run out of batteries and you borrow a friend's calculator. So you type it in as you normally would, 1 divided by 2 root 3 and hit enter and you get 0 0.87, which is incorrect if that's what you're trying to calculate. So what's happening here? Well, this calculator is interpreting this as half of root 3, whereas the HP interprets it as it's written there. So to find out why this happens, let's have a look at the manuals. Um, now, when we write something like 2 root 3, without any kind of multiplication symbol in between the 2 and the root 3. That's called multiplication by juxtaposition, or implied multiplication. So on the TI's manual, under order of operations, it has the implied multiplication at the same level as division. Whereas for the HP, it has a couple of extra levels. It has implied multiplication there, and also here whereas division is all the way down here. So this method, where implied multiplication has the same priority as division, I'm going to be calling that PEMDAS. Um, and this one, where there's this extra level, um, I'm going to be calling that PEGMDAS. <laughs> so parentheses, exponents, multiplication by juxtap juxtaposition, and then multiplication and division, so explicit multiplication with the times symbol that still has the same level as division, and then there's addition and subtraction. So those are the two main methods that calculators use, either PEMDAS or PEGMDAS. So this disagreement between PEMDAS and PEGMDAS is what causes the two calculators to interpret this differently. It's also what causes them to interpret the um, one of the famous Facebook questions differently. These things keep popping up. I think the current iteration is this, 8 divided by 2 times 2 plus 2. Um, but when I made my first video on PEMDAS about this question, a lot of people were just saying, you know, who cares, it's just a silly Facebook question. But I'm hoping that by showing the different ways that the calculators interpret this, it demonstrates that this is actually kind of a problem because students could be losing marks. And not just that, but I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you're trying to work through a textbook and your answer to a question doesn't match what's in the back of the book and you keep checking and rechecking it and rereading the chapter and that can just take hours out of your life. Um, so I think this is actually kind of a problem. So let's have a little look into the history of PEMDAS. Now I wasn't able to find out who invented the acronym itself, but the idea that multiplications and divisions have the same precedence, let's have a look at that. So there's this article by Sarah Sass, which um, goes over quite thoroughly the history of this. Now right into the 1920s, there wasn't any sort of agreement about the order that they should be done in. Some authors were saying multiplication should be done first, and others were saying that they should be done in the order they occur. So there's these three books that uh, are putting forth that idea, this PEMDAS idea. Now let's have a look at them. So first year algebra, that's saying all multiplications and divisions in their order from left to right. Then there's first course in algebra, which says something similar, and second course in algebra. Similar thing again. Now what's really interesting though is that if you actually read through these books, all three of them break that rule when it comes to juxtaposition. For example, in first year algebra, you see expressions like this being taken to mean this, which is actually following PEGMDAS. In first course in algebra, you see a similar kind of thing. And in second course in algebra, We've got this 2ab divided by 2a making b. Now, if you followed the rule that they had stated to the letter, you would interpret this as 2ab divided by 2, so you work out that that's ab, and then you multiply by a, so you'd get a squared b, and not 
B as they've written here. So why haven't they stated that juxtapositions should come before division when they said their rules? Well, one possibility is that they just didn't realize that um, it was contradictory, that what they were saying in that rule didn't agree with what they're actually doing in their book. Another possibility is that they did realize that it was a contradiction, but they actually thought, you know, everyone already knows that juxtaposition comes before division. It's so well established that we don't even need to say it. But some authors of the time did notice the contradiction. There's this article by N.J. Lennis who was pointing out that the rule stated in these books is uh, a contradiction with the actual usage. So he was saying, like, if we actually follow that rule, then you would find that, for example, 9a squared divided by 3a would equal 3a cubed if you use the rule that's written in the books, but no one would interpret it in that manner. So the point I want to hammer home here is that juxtaposition going before division was already well established well before anyone came up with this idea of PEMDAS. So at the time of writing of this, people were still arguing whether division or multiplication should be done first. But everyone agreed that multiplication by juxtaposition always comes first before division, even the people who were saying that divisions and multiplication should be um, applied in the order that they occur from left to right. In the early days of scientific calculators, they didn't actually support multiplication by juxtaposition at all. If you left out the time symbol, they just give you a syntax error. Now, the earliest one that I could find a manual for online that supports juxtaposition was the EL512, which was released in 1984. This is from uh, Sharp. And they say they've got multiplication cleared of X instruction or times instruction. So meaning multiplication where the times symbol has been left out. That's at a higher priority level than normal multiplication and division. And then here's the manual for the TI-81, which was released around 1990. And you can see they've put implied multiplication at a higher level, um, at that level and that level higher than regular multiplication and division. So both of these calculators are following PEGMDAS. The early Casios followed PEGMDAS as well. This is actually my old calculator that my parents bought for me around the year 2000. And you can see it's interpreting this as two times the three first, making six, and then six divided by that, making one. So that's following PEGMDAS as well. Then in the 90s and 2000s, everything changed. Um, Texas Instruments came out with the TI-83 in 1996, and that followed the PEMDAS rules. So they put the implied multiplication down all the way back to the same level as division. And then Casio came out with the FXES series in 2005, and that was similarly PEMDAS. Um, Sharp seems to have stuck with PEGMDAS the whole way through, though. Every calculator that I found from Sharp was PEGMDAS. And then HP seems to be all over the place. Some of the HP calculators follow PEMDAS, some of them follow PEGMDAS, and I can't really see any sort of pattern to it. So why did this switch happen? Well, I've been corresponding with a representative from Casio who was saying that uh, basically, they make their calculators according to what teachers want. So they do various hearings uh, with teachers and schools. And they were saying that, you know, they started out with PEGMDAS, but then they switched to PEMDAS because teachers, and mostly teachers just from North America, wanted them to switch to PEMDAS. But now, actually, after hearing from a wider range of people, they've uh, switched back to PEGMDAS. So I found it quite interesting that they said that it was just North American teachers who were pushing this idea of PEMDAS. Um, I've been also talking to David Linkletter, who wrote an article about PEMDAS, uh, about the same question of like, what is six divided by two times one plus two? And he was saying something similar, that it was mostly the American teachers who were saying, 
Okay, follow PEMDAS, the answer is nine. Whereas teachers from the rest of the world, teachers that he's spoken to from Germany, China, and India, have said, no, the answer is one. Um, so I don't know why that is, why North American teachers are saying PEMDAS, whereas the rest of the world is saying PEGINDAS. And just to be clear, it's just the North American teachers who are in favor of PEMDAS. It's not mathematicians or scientists or engineers uh, from North America that are saying, okay, Pe PEMDAS is the whole truth. It's a strict rule and you have to follow it even with juxtaposition. Um, there was also this statement from TI, which was, I just thought this was interesting because they were saying how they'd made the switch, but they were also saying that the actual convention when you're writing things down on paper is pejimness. So they were saying implied multiplication like should have a higher priority because that's how you would write things down. And, but you know, we've switched and now it's this different way that you wouldn't normally write on paper. Okay, enough about history. What about calculators that are still being made today? So I went by my local store to see what was available and whether they're following PEMDAS or PEGINDAS these days. So uh, the Casios are doing PEGINDAS. The TI was the one that I showed at the start. That one's doing PEMDAS. This one wasn't in stock and the manual I think doesn't actually mention in the priority levels implied multiplication. So I think that one might be PEMDAS, but I'm not sure. Um, all of the sharps are PEGMDAS. Um, that one's PEGMDAS. That one wasn't available, but from reading its manual, I think that it's PEMDAS. And these are all PEGMDAS as well. Those are sharps too. So most of them are following PEGMDAS these days, with the exception of the TI and probably these HP ones that weren't even in stock, so probably aren't sold as often as the others. Now, I just want to show you what Casio is doing because I think this is really a, a good solution to this problem. So this is a modern Casio um, FX100AU that I bought um, a few months ago. So if you type in 6 divided by 2 times 1 plus 2, let's see what happens when I hit equals. It actually inserts brackets there. So instead of just evaluating it some way um, and not letting you know, it actually tells you by putting the brackets in how it's interpreting that expression. So I think that is a really good solution. Like unlike the HP and the TI and the sharps, um, which you know don't really explicitly tell you whether it's using PEMDAS or PEGMDAS, the Casios will put in these brackets to let you know. As for online calculators, um, Google Calc follows PEMDAS, but Wolfram Alpha is really weird because, okay, here it's following PEMDAS, giving the answer of nine. If you put it in as six divided by two X, it's still following PEMDAS. But if you put in six divided by X, Y, it will interpret that as like PEGMDAS. It interprets that as six divided by X and then divided by Y as well and gives the answer of one. So I'm not sure what kind of priority levels they're working with there but they're a bit inconsistent. So I think we need to come to a conclusion about which one of these is correct. Um, do we interpret one divided by two root three as half of root three, or do we interpret it the way that the majority of mathematicians, scientists, and engineers would interpret it? So I'm firmly in favor of the, the PEGMDAS. Now, in my first video that I made on this, um, I was arguing based on usage, like this is how mathematicians interpret it, this is, therefore this is the rule. Now, a lot of people correctly pointed out that if there is a strict rule of PEMDAS, then you know mathematicians just shouldn't be lazy, they should use brackets or something. Now, I think that this comes from a misconception that mathematicians have gotten together and decided, okay, PEMDAS is the rule, this is a strict rule, we should all follow this. That has not happened. PEMDAS was something that some educator wrote down as, you know, either as an oversimplification or because they didn't 
understand the actual rules of mathematics. Mathematicians have not decided in any sort of way that uh, multiplication and division should always have the same precedence, even if it's by juxtaposition. In fact, if you want to see some official statements from mathematicians or scientists, then we could look at the American Mathematical Society style guide, which said the rule that multiplication indicated by juxtaposition is carried out before division. Um, it actually doesn't say that anymore. This is a past style guide, but they do still use that rule. For example, here is a recent article where they're intending this to be following Pejm Das. Um, we could look at the American Physical Society style guide where they put multiplication before division. They actually put it for, you know, explicit multiplication as well, but I, I'm guessing that's just because you hardly ever would use explicit multiplication in a physics journal. It's always by juxtaposition. Um, we could also look at the American Institute of Physics style guide where they've said that 1 on 3x always means 1 divided by open bracket 3x close bracket. So they're saying Pejm Das is the case. Now you might still disagree with me, which is fine. You might think that PEMDAS is the way to go, but I think that we can all agree that students need to be aware that some calculators use Pejm Das and some use PEMDAS, and that most mathematicians and scientists will be following Pejm Das in their publications. So what I would do is probably introduce this idea around the time that you learn about juxtaposition in algebra. So when you're beginning algebra, you learn that for example, 2a means 2 times a. So maybe when students are learning that, we can just say, oh, by the way, uh, multiplication by juxtaposition, some people consider it to have priority over division. Um, so I don't think that that would add too much difficulty to algebra class or to textbooks, and um, it would clear up a lot of confusion for a lot of people. So if you know any teachers or textbook writers, <laughs> that um, would benefit from seeing this video, then send it along to them.